there is no issue with the color of this dashboard it was a sea of green today not a single red hi everyone welcome to the update of 12 september in the nugget section today we'll talk about power finance corporation hindalco was the best performer 4.4 percent up bharti Airtel also 4.4 percent it is actually the heavyweight so that made the most contribution in taking nifty up and today's graphs are very very interesting the and biggest I sectors led from the front today look at IT Infosys 2.1% Zomato of course keeps getting upgrades up 5% the second biggest sector that was up 1.7% today the largest sector banking was actually not too far behind 1.5% up ICICI just a shy short of its 52 week high after today's move Kotak Mahindra which has been sulking for nearly one or two years now that is at the cusp of getting into the green zone so it was an ordinary day till about two o'clock the graphs which appear flat were actually not that flat just at the journey after that was so steep that first four five hours look like a straight line look at the synchronization be it nifty bank nifty or large stocks like reliance icica bank hdfc bank they went up like a rocket just after two o'clock at the same time in the same direction atel hit an all-time high actually nifty also hit an all-time high hul another lifetime high itc another lifetime high the trading range for nifty was nearly 1.9 percent the gap up number itself was a very good number and most traders would have taken what nifty was offering till about two o'clock but what came after that was totally unprecedented in fact one thing which happened was around this particular point it seemed that the rally was over and most people who were short they heaved a sigh of relief many people would have reversed their position also but then came another huge rally anyone who had taken a straddle or who were short anyone who had stop losses everyone would have got crushed believe me in options market today people would have lost a lot of money not made money nifty closed nearly at the highest point of the day this was the all-time high the nifty stock which is worth talking about today is airtel it was down a lot yesterday broke 1580 but today it nearly opened at 1600 consolidated in that range and after that who knew that it will get into a totally new orbit not just make an all-time high beyond 1608 which was the last high but cross 1650 today the trading range for atel is not usually this high 61 points or nearly four percent slight profit booking towards the end of the day look at the one year graph of airtel not a single time it has gone in the oversold territory no exceptions in banks either the same same graph for everyone the surprise element was metals today jsw steel shot up three percent hindustan zinc found its feet up nearly three percent tata steel i mentioned yesterday's update it will go up vedanta selling finally ended hindalco was up nearly four and a half percent consumption pack again had 52 weeks highs hul itc britannia page industries the star of this sector today was varun beverages after the split today 620 after the adjustments it opened nearly at 660 no point talking about the numbers everything was up one and a half to two percent fi is bought for 14,000 crore it is not possible to move such large gaps so much without fi is pumping in lot of money in cash di has found this as an opportunity to lighten a bit 1800 crore sold so bajaj housing finance had to honor each and every bid then the amount spent on the ipo would be one percent of india's gdp today three stocks in the top 10 hit 52 week highs all time highs atl was the best performer 4.4 percent the trend for reliance broke finally tcs had a good day as well the consumption pack continues the good run silver was up a percent gold was up a little bit bitcoin is up 2.33 percent we went dangerously close in the day to 84 levels today brent is slightly up but still down a lot below 72 nvidia just goes up or down in 78 percent not less not more now quick update on the shareholding of bajaj housing finance because that is likely to open nearly 2x from the ipo price so bajaj holdings holds 39 percent in bajaj finserv bajaj finserv owns 51% of Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finance owns 100% of Bajaj Housing Finance. So when the stock of this company opens at 2x, the market cap automatically for Bajaj Finance, Bajaj Finserv, Bajaj Holdings, all three of them goes up. Euphoria has been reflecting already in the stocks of the Bajaj Group but it will go up a lot more now. So I have applied for this IPO. I hold Bajaj Finance and I hold Bajaj Holdings. These are in the long-term portfolio. Rare days, zero stocks down. The leader of the pack, Bharti Airtel. Reliance is back at the top. HDFC, SBI, 
Infosys. Now these stocks were not down, they were up least. SBI, Asian Paints, Dr. Reddy, Divi's Lab and Nestle. Despite going up so much, Bajaj Finance is still in the fear zone. ICICI Bank is nearly at 52 week high, it is still showing in fear zone. Same with HUL. Next 50, there were 4 stocks down, 46 up. Zomato has taken the permanent position on the podium these days. Jindal Steel was up next, followed by Adani Power, Vedanta, Chola Mandalam, Varun Beverages. This is wrong because Varun Beverages is showing a huge fall because of the split. This data will autocorrect tomorrow. What was down today? Dmart, ICIC, Lombard, Colgate, Adani Green, Adani Total. Energy sector was bleeding yesterday. It was a sea of green today. NTPC led the power companies up 4%. Adani Power, I am seeing up so much after a long time. Toy sector finally had a good day. There are also talks of windfall tax being abolished. Reliance by virtue of the market cap led the pack up 2%. Today ONGC was also up but Oil India was down even in today's market. IOC, BPCL, HPCL they all went up today. Consumption pack, a sea of green as usual, ITC up 1%, today HUL also was up 2%, fantastic volumes, huge buying interest, aerospace and defense overall up, automobiles came back strongly 2.1% up, beverages, Varun beverage 3% up, for Varun beverages it's a 2 is to 5 split, 2 stocks have become 5. So volumes will be very high in the upcoming days. Chemicals had an ordinary day. Asian Paints, Pedialyte both were up. Coal India up 2.4%. RVNL was down today also, but the construction pack was on fire, 1.7% up. Cement sector was up 1.6%. Good comeback by insurance today, 1.4% up. Investment banking was not looking that good. Profit booking. Look at the gains in the heavy machinery sector. The sector was up 2%. CG power 5.7%. Metals and mining was very strong today. The sector was up 3%. Pharma was up with huge volumes today. Kalyan Jewelers hit a lifetime high today, up 5%. Titan and Page Industries are in green. Page Industries are up 3.4% today also. This sector also had fantastic volumes. Huge buying in telecom. The sector was up 4% thanks to Bharti Airtel. Overall, 34 out of 36 sectors were up. Interesting day. I spot Titan, Pedialyte, Coal India, IOC. Pedialyte was missing in my portfolio. It was in my list for a long time. Remaining stocks, I have increased my holding. I got rid of Mazgaon Dock, Cochin Shipyard. The final lot was sold. Losses there. Hindusan Copper was in green today. Got rid of the stock. As of now, I am not very interested in metals. Overall, loss booked and investment mates. Now on good days like today, it is better to make money in the options market. Bharti Airtel for the third day gave good returns. In fact, this number was higher only. Just that I am sitting on a 12,000 loss right now because I have shorted Airtel at the end of the day today. But it kept going up after I shorted. Now the reason I shorted is that the data is indicating Airtel will go down. These are indicators only. They do not define the outcome. But seems like Bharti Airtel will be back at 1620 tomorrow. Time for today's nugget, BFC Power Finance Corporation. It has run up a lot. Is it an expensive company? Let me first take you through the numbers. This is approximately the graph for one year up from 200 levels to nearly 500 levels. This has been a continuous upride for PFC. There have been times when PFC has been the overbought zone, but right now it is moving rapidly towards oversold territory. We have more numbers coming up. The company is owned by government of India. It is the highest profit making NBFC in the country, not just public sector. In Fortune 500 companies of India, it is at number 37. The bond of this company, highest long-term domestic rating of AAA. Not many companies enjoy this privilege. In fact, REC and PFC are accorded a status where they issue tax-saving bonds to adjust capital gains. Not all companies can do it. PFC group structure, let me actually jump to another diagram. PFC is in collaboration with Government of India for ultra-mega large projects in power space. PFC partners with government in financing them. This is the parent PFC. In terms of subsidiaries, PFC Consulting, Power Equity Capital Advisors, REC. Lot of people don't know this. PFC is the parent of REC. Just like Bajaj Finance owns Bajaj Housing. ESL is a JV for energy efficiency. 58% of that is owned by PFC. So when you buy PFC, you get income from all of these sources added to the EPS. Note all of these JVs do not require money to be added by PFC. Most of them are SPVs created by government of India where PFC was made the part owner. This is another view from screener of the performance of the stock. June quarter, this is the election time. It fell 25% on 4th of June and I bought a lot of PFC that day, made significant money. 
these opportunities come once in a year. This fall in the last month or so also is nearly 10%. If I look at the EPS versus PE ratio graph, the EPS of the company was actually not going anywhere for nearly a decade of NPS stuck projects. As a result, the PE of this company was hardly 2 or 3, which means the earnings of PFC were enough to recover the cost of the stock in less than 3 years. After that, the focus on electrification has improved significantly, especially in the renewable space, and the EPS has been going up continuously. As a result, after 2022-2023, the PE also has got revised. I call it forward PE. This is nearly 8 now. In the past, PFC has comfortably enjoyed a PE of 10. It is still far off from that. Now forward PE, what that means is what is 8 today? If nothing happens, then that will become 7 and 6 probably in next year and the year after automatically with EPS increasing. Now June was not that great a quarter. The EPS was a little less than the previous one. The net NPAs and gross NPAs have been steadily coming down for the company. Finance profit last quarter had come down. This is also owing to high interest rates. The number to watch for is revenue, financing profit, financing margin, EPS and the NPA numbers. If any of these numbers worsen for two quarters continuously, then that may be a sign of slight slowdown. These are annual numbers. This is the TTM number. 37% financing margin is pretty good. Now look at the dividend payout ratios. Approximately quarter of what they earn that is paid out as dividend government being the largest beneficiary eps healthy uptrend so if eps is continuously going up and the ratio remains 25 percent you will keep getting increased dividend and your dividend yield will go up only over the years government stake is same 56 percent over the years fis own significant part of the company nearly 18 percent now strength wise it is a maharatna cpsc company mini ratna navratna maharatna that's the ladder at Maharatna level, the companies are allowed a lot of financial freedom. They don't have to run to central government and power ministry for each and every decision. It is a finance company, not a power execution company. So their job is to arrange money from various sources and give it to companies to create the infrastructure and set up power plants. In fact, they have started operations in Gift City also, which means now they are able to borrow cheap money from overseas and use it to improve their margins as well as cheap funding of projects. The weakness is again that it is not into execution so difficult to control. If projects are getting delayed, there is very little they can do. Yes, the collateral is complete power project and in the past they have at times taken control of power plants and later sold them to another private company and made money out of it. If they were to not give too much dividend for 2-3 years, they could actually borrow a lot lesser and make lot more money in future. This is what microfinance companies do. This is what most banks do. They don't give too much dividend. The biggest opportunity, India's ever increasing power demand. One very important part is whatever exists in India, I talked about it yesterday also, 250 gigawatt, most of that is thermal, coal. That needs to be replaced with clean energy. So not only we have to go for additional 150 gigawatt of new power, we have to also nearly replace 200 gigawatt of power with clean generation. And in your power tariffs, you will continue to pay for the capex required with this sector your power bills are not going to come down. The biggest threats, timely execution and completion of projects. But at times the project cost because of the financing pressure goes so much that it is not viable to complete the projects and it gets abandoned. Also, I talked about those margins and interest rates too high. As a result, it also impacts the overall cost of the project. In the past, these threats were what kept the PE of these stocks, PFC and RDC significantly down. Hopefully things are looking a lot better for PFC right now. I treat PFC, REC as fixed deposits or slightly better than them. The tax rate is same. Any capital appreciation over the years will actually give me additional money also. Hope this session was useful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.